own a gun? Who, me? Yeah. I carry a gun. With me. I don't feel safe in South Africa. Because if I felt safe in South Africa, I wouldn't carry a gun. So when someone comes to take my phone, insurance will replace my phone. But insurance won't replace my life. You know, insurance can replace my car. You know, so again, if I'm in the car and I'm actually the point guns at me, I will. Now I might also shit myself, put my hands up like this, get into the car, sharp vibe. The law is very clear. You need to prove that life was at risk. So if you take out a knife and start moving in my direction, my life is at risk. If you take out a knife and start moving towards TK's direction, his life is at risk. So he has right to life. So I can neutralize you because I'm protecting life. But if you go and you snatch his phone and run away, I can't pull out my weapon. But I know as, as these young teachers, we need to be very cognizant about how we deploy them. Because some of them are young, dog. It's like your second year in varsity as a teacher. You go and teach them tricks. That means that when they were in grade 10, some of these girls in grade 10, you were in matric. Yeah. That's not that bad, is it? A matric in a grade 10? It's not bad. 16 and 18, that's not bad at all. Not bad, not bad at all. So now you fast forward, now she's 18 and you 20. Ah, now we must be very aware. Yeah, but the craziest thing I've seen is seeing somebody who's doing grade 9 and being picked up by an older guy. That used to happen all the time in my school. That used to happen all the time. All the time. What makes these guys to be attracted to these young girls? Well, some of these young girls try to look older. Because girls don't go, they go through puberty a little bit before us. So some of them, physically, they look very different, dog. Most of them still look like little kids. Let's be honest, most of them. But some of them look, mm. and then they're young and they're impressionable. And if you are a 20 year old, 25 year old loser mm. who can't get 20 year olds, you're gonna go and pick on the weakest link. Don't you think? Imagine being a loser of a hyena in the felt you're going to look for the most sickly, smallest buck 100%. to catch. Yeah. And I think what's, these are what these guys are doing. Because, I mean, I, 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 so, you know, like with gents, before we record, there's gents, I mean, We're I always tell them. Dude. Are we recording? Yeah. Okay, well, at least I didn't say anything about anybody's mama. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. with, with some of these gents, I always say, Witty, there should be a rule. And the rule is half your age mm. plus seven. So, if you are a 30-year-old man, the youngest girl you should be with, the youngest, is half your age, which is 15, plus 7. That pushes up to 22. That's the youngest. What does the law say? The law, say the law says 16. After 16, it's lunch. Okay. And you're like, but you, you, you can't be 18 and be with a 40-year-old man. If the law took this rule that I'm saying, if you're 40, half your age, 20 plus 7, that's 27. So if you're 40 with the 27 minimum, entry level that sh we shouldn't fight you can't be umsholos umsholos at age 70 he made like a 24 year old baby pregnant dog that's wrong half your age 35 plus 7 42 umsholos at age 70 you can be with a 42 year old I think we, we can look away it's just sometimes 18 is not 18 you know if I'm 21 with an 18 year old that's 18 but if I'm 31 with an 18-year-old, nah, fam. It doesn't make sense. Nah, nah. But have you seen today's 18-year-old? Nah, nah. It doesn't matter because it, 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 they, they might be physically ready, yeah. but mentally they're not. You shouldn't be able oh, to date okay. a person that you weren't in school with. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense. Now, what are you doing, bro? Like when, when, when you were in, 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 in dead year, she was in grade three. Ah, fam. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You're supposed to be to bro. Are you coming here with your yeah. old mentality? Because at the end of the day, in in wooing woman, you know, is it is Zulu in transitional amans? A lot of it is lies and manipulation, vele in the dance. But now, when you when she's already young, young and inexperienced and dumb as hell, bro. Nah, dog, you can't. I, 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 I frown upon that. Understanding that I'm far from perfect. What do you make of boys that are dating, or let me just say young men that are dating older women? No, I, so I, I always think that about it in certain phases of life. Yeah. So I mean, I always look at a person going through their phase. I mean, I, um, 
I had a child at age 27, I think. I had my own homes. Your, I had my own... first child. My first child. 25, 27, yeah. I'm not late, so, yeah. Yeah. So I was in a different stage than guys who were 27 and maybe were still at home and didn't have kids and didn't have and were still studying. So even though we're the same age, we're not in the same stage of life. You know, so there's a lot of very, 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 very mature 25 year olds. And those people can get away with dating a person who's 35. But generally speaking, whenever I see a person who is significantly older, 40 years old, dating a person who's 25, whether you are man or woman or woman or man, whatever the case is, I look at the fact that there is a power dynamic and a manipulation here. You know, there's something that the 40 year old hasn't gotten yet, you know, they stuck in a certain stage of life that they want to be able to manipulate and take advantage of 25 year olds. It's like seeing that 50 year old guy at a club where there's 22 year olds. I say there's, there's a part of you that hasn't, that you haven't graduated from, that's still holding you back. Once you've gone past that, you, you wouldn't find joy in being with little 21 year old girls. Or if you're a 50 year old or a 40 year old lady, you wouldn't find joy in being with a 21 year old. Generally speaking, I do understand that there are unicorns and anomalies, but generally speaking, you're in different stages. What do we talk about? What do we talk about? The music you used to listen to, ooh, 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 Whitney Houston, you used to listen to oh, Casey and JoJo, and you're talking to a kid who only knows young, young, little Yari. Yabone. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, only knows Yanos. So the, the gap becomes too big. Then the question is, what are you guys talking about besides sex? That means the only commonality is sex and partying. What else? Because we can't have any intellectual com uh, conversations because you're not there. We can't have conversations about days gone past because you're not there. We can't talk about real plans, real future. I'm in a different stage in my life where I'm talking about, okay, this is my year plan, my three-year plan, my five-year plan. If you're 22, dog, and you just think about partying and you're thinking about buying bot, so what is it that we're talking about besides partying and sex? You know, so what is it about me that is attracting a person that only has those two things in common with me. So I need to first work on me. So when I look at an older man or an older woman, I realize Guti, there's so many things about them. Forget the little child, because the little child is clear that you are a hungry hyena trying to find the weakest link, because you're not gonna find a strong fucking buffalo, let me tell you that. Mm. These, some of these grannies that are taking advantage of these young kids, they, they know they can't get anyone within their range. Some of these, they think they can, because it's the human arrogance, right? I'm 35, I think I can get a 32 year old. Gandhi, if I'm not mature enough, if I'm not in the right stage of my life, I won't attract, I won't attract quality 32 year olds, I won't. They don't have time for my bullshit, but I can attract some of these young, innocent, uh, what is he coming in for now? Naive yeah. 21 year olds, because I can just throw money at the situation. But a sister who's 32 has her own working, stable. I can't just throw a bottle of verve and think she'll jump. She won't jump. 21 year old might jump. I can't just throw the fact that in driver E4 pipe and she might jump. She might not jump. She's like, hey, I've also got the same car. Oh, sounds cute. You know, she might have a better car. You know, so again, I always look at those age dynamics and I just say, what is it about you to date a person where there's a significant gap? And if you're going to tell me what there's more than just sex and alcohol or sex and partying, uh, I disagree. Because you look at those relationships and they be together for three months, six months, and then you ask the older party after they've gone through it. And you're like, what did you gain? And then you realize this is ah. nothing. Then it was just partying and sex. Because there's nothing really tangible. Oh, this person grew me in this area and this area, and I became a better person in this space and that space. All you can tell me is that now you know how to suck a dick or now that you know how to go down. Or that, that's all you know is new sexual things and new alcohol and different parting spots. They introduced you to the world of TikTok because you dated a 21 year old. So you now know the new TikTok trends that these girls are doing. That's maybe where you've learned. Outside of that, there's nothing. I don't believe. Jeez, man. What's your view on having opposite sex friends? Can't believe you just started recording. Yeah, we're done, bro. We're like on 20 minutes. Let's go, bro. <laughs> 20 minutes. Let's go, dude. I'm just here. You know, we're just having a decent conversation. I actually I have it. so many questions that I want to ask you, but I'm respecting the lady at the back. 
I don't know. Actually. No, you must, you must, you must ask. I, I think the, the beautiful part is that I'm in a stage of my life now. Yeah. Where whatever I say in front of you, mm. hand on Bible, I can say if my mom was sitting in front of us because she's heard it. You, you know the conversations that my brother and I have. Yeah. We don't just have those conversations when it's just me and him. We have those conversations when our partners are there, our kids are there. We have the same, in the exact same language. We don't tweak mm. the language. So if I'm going to say fuck in front of you, I say fuck them hoes in front of my mom. Not because I'm trying to you disrespect my mom. It's because I want to be as authentically pensive in every space I'm in. I don't want to misrepresent any part or disrespect any other person by not being me. Am I perfect? No. Am I going to intentionally disrespect anyone? No. But I'm also not going to hold back who I am. So if I say... No, man, fuck those people. I don't like them. Mm. When they hear, I'm like, ah, no, Machita, fuck those guys. And they're going to do nothing. Because they're in phone and they're in phone. I'd say it. Because I don't want to be fake in front of you, bro. Shabalala, dog, why? If I don't like you, let's say I don't like you on a personal level, mm. I would never be here. I like you off air, mm. on a personal level. That, that's the only reason why I'm here. I would net the person could have a million subscribers, 10 million subscribers. If I didn't like them, I would never do that. I'd never sit and have a conversation with them. I'd never have coffee with them. I'd never have a beer with them because I want to be authentic. I want to say authentic things. And if they put me on their platform, I'm going to tell them on the platform, <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't you think that should be the human nature yeah, where we're sure. authentic? So just as a segue going into your male and female friends yeah. and the, some of the challenging questions that we, we might discuss. Because I feel men and women shouldn't be friends because it speaks to exactly what I just spoke about. People won't be authentic. People will lie. It's almost like when you have a, a, a hyena and a buck being friends. It can't happen. It, it can't happen. And I've heard so many sisters say, no, man, I'm, a, I'm, I'm friends with TK. I'm friends with TK." I was like, ah, me and TK would never say. I was like, no, only speak for yourself. You can't speak for him. You don't know how he feels. How do you know his brain? How? We wired from a biological point. How, how do you know his brain? You might not like him. Let me tell you a story. Um, shout out Penny. She's probably going to hate me when she hears this. Um, my sister was dating this, this guy that I really liked. you know. Um, and I said to my sister, now that you're dating and you, want, uh, you can't have any male friends, Right, so I'm I'm speaking on this chance behalf. I was like, no, you can't have any male friends for what, you know? No, but I've got just one male friend. We're really cool. We've been friends for a while, even before I met my 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 partner. I've been. I was like, no, you. Uh, I don't. I don't. I've never met him, but I don't trust him, you know. Why is he not? Whatever discussions that you are having with him, why is he not having that with his male friends or with his girlfriend? Oh, he's single. I was like, where? Well, for now, when? She said, oh, she disagrees, she disagreed. I was like, okay, sis, please can you just do me one favor? One day when you guys are chilling, just you, you and him, and you're watching whatever, drinking a glass of wine, I want you to turn around, look at him, and then just start leaning towards for a kiss. Just lean. Don't. My sister goes, she says, I know, Toby. If I did that, he'd just push me away. I was like, sure. A month goes by. Ah, my sister calls me. It's like half past 12 at night. She goes, ah, man, Toby. Ah, she starts shouting. I'm like, what is this? what's happening? What's happening? She's like, I've just lost a friend because of you. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, ah, I, I did that silly thing that you said I must do. And then, ah, he jumped on top of me. I was like, exactly. So he jumped on top He was of waiting me. for that opportunity. <laughs> he was waiting patiently for that opportunity. Yo, I would do the same, I mean. Dog, if you met with a pretty friend, you know, because I'm saying, I'm not saying every guy is attracted to every female. I'm not saying every female is attracted to every guy. I'm saying, you never know who's attracted to who and who's waiting for an opportunity. Because you, you, to many females, are incredibly attractive. And they will sit patiently and be friends with you and listen to you moan about your girlfriend and listen to you moan about your, your parents and listen to you moaning about a thousand things until the opportunity comes where you are vulnerable or you say something leading and Asha. I know people now who have been in, in long-term committed relationships, but they started off as just friends. Just friends. Mm. Now we're six years together, 10 years together. Now we're married, we've got kids. You and just friends. Can you already see the fruits of being just friends? 
Can you see where it are? It, it can't be authentic. It cannot be authentic. You can't have a mouse and a cat be friends. It, to me, at least. I've seen, I grew up in a different time. I never saw my mom with her male friends. You know, to me. Yeah. Huh? I'm saying true because of, um, I saw it with my mom too. She went yeah. and with Ubab Chabu sitting there. With, we never saw it. There's a reason why we didn't see it. Because it didn't exist. And all the female friends that my father had, who, 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 he had kids with them. You know, so uh, why is that one looking like, why is that one looking like, so you knew who to aunt banbani, no sis banbani, or your dad's, mm -hmm, you know? So like all of a sudden, the whole concept of friendship, you're like, nah, I don't, I don't get what you're getting from. I'm not saying that you can't be friendly to sisters. I'm not saying you can't be respectful to sisters. I'm saying this concept of being a friend, because maybe the definition of what is a friend, a friend to me is a person that I can be vulnerable around. A friend to me is a person that I can sit with at 11 o'clock at night, share a drink, and just offload what I need to offload, good, bad, and everything in between. Ne? So if I can do that with you, surely I need to be able to do that with Tusbongil if I call her a friend. Surely I should be able to do that with Mandis if I call that a friend. But if, if, if to me they are friends, I can be vulnerable around them. You know, I don't mind uh, just jumping out the shower and then changing. Because we're busy carrying a conversation. I'm busy with your things. I'm busy with my things. You know, I see you as my boy. You see, we're carrying on, you know. But the moment there's a female, think about it like this. There's a female and she just come out of a shower. You and your dirty male mind, it will go somewhere. I promise you it will. I promise you it will go somewhere. Dirty, dirty male mind. I don't see it. I'm sorry. I've never seen it work long term. I've never seen it work within my circle of friends. I've never seen it work. Every time there's male or female friends somewhere, someone is doing something they shouldn't do with someone, someone. Always. Oh, just a friend. We just go jogging. Kuzu, kuzu. Something always happens. If you can give me a couple of examples within my own spaces or people that I've heard of where it's just been, no, we've just been great friends. We sit, we have a glass of wine mm -hmm. at two o'clock when, when her husband is away and my wife are away. We just, as friends, come through and we watch our shows together. Yeah. We have some pizza and we just chill. And nothing's ever happened? I don't know those examples. I don't know if they exist. It's crazy, eh? <sighs> People are naughty, bro. It's crazy, isn't it? People are horny, dog. <laughs> What are the dangers of friends with benefits? In 2024? 2024, yeah. I don't believe in that as well. I think it's disgusting, dog. I think, so I've got a problem with today's hyper-sexualized yeah. community. Guys, I've had my fair share of mistakes. Have you, so have, you, have you ever been involved in a- Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so- Sorry, I hope- uh, Ask all your questions. <laughs> so I, all, all I'm trying yeah. to say is that I'm not, I don't want to talk as if I'm talking from a point of being perfect. Okay. I think for a lot of things that I have experienced, they are what has led me to not like certain things. So if I was doing uh, drugs or whatever the case may be, now I can say, guys, rather not, because I've learned the hard way. Not everybody needs to learn by putting their hand in the fire. Mm. You know? So to those that have put their hand in the fire and have got burnt, they, their job is to educate us. I do not believe in having a high sex number or high sex. I don't believe in having sex just for the mere sex. Um, the reason why I say this, and this goes for men and women alike, so I don't want any sisters thinking, Woody, where does my body count? It matters both sides. I don't think there's a single female out there that is like, oh my God, I love Justin because uh, he's slept with a hundred women. I don't think that's exciting for women as well, as much as we don't find it exciting. You know, I think there's something in being rare any rare anything, generally speaking, is very precious, you know, and there's a value to that. So if you have only been with, let's say, eight sisters and you dated them and it's women that you've respected and you've treated them like queens, I think there's power in that. That one. The same way that if a sister says, I've only been with three guys that I was dating and this was the situation, I think there's power in that as well. This thing of giving people you, your essence, your person, your energy, your this, your resource for free doesn't speak to me. It doesn't because now that I'm coming to date you, why? Why am I dating you? Just when you are taking these, these bitches, bro, buying them bottles of verve and handbags for free, you are taking these chips, fly, buying these bitches randomly, things. You are going and fixing their washing machines and, you know, fixing, pulling them, why? 
So now I must come through as your girlfriend and I must cook for you and I must clean for you and I must help you through, navigate through your own psychological damages. Why must I do that when you're doing it, when, when you were giving bitches things for free? Imagine, let's swap the roles. There's a lady that you like. There's a lady that you like and she was giving booty out for free to random guys, mm -hmm. fuck buddies, whatever the case may be. Now you need to come in there. What is it? Because now when you come in, you invest your time, your energy, your resource. What is it that she'll be pouring into your cup that is worth that exchange? She's been doing it for free. I could use my phone. If, if you were to find out that, hey, they're selling this phone for 5,000 rand. You want to come buy it, right? But just, just before you buy it, just before you come buy it, you find out what the, the ice store is actually giving them out for free. Right? Mm. Just before you got there, they were giving out for free. Now, as you get there, they stop. And they say, no, half of 5,000. How do you feel? I wouldn't be happy. You're going to be happy? No, I'm, I wouldn't. No, you're going to feel like a boost, yeah. bro. Because you're like, everybody got this shit for free. Everybody's getting this chick for free. So now you pay. <laughs> Why must I pay? There's, there's, there's girls, dog. I'm telling you now, there's girls that I can hit up now. Mm. I'm like, hey, I'm hungry. She'll say, now, nah, come, come through, I'll cook for you. She'll cook for me, she'll wash my clothes, she'll iron, she'll give me booty, she'll give me for free. And once I'm saying, I'm like, and then I'm out. Why must the next guy, in exchange for all of those things, resource, time, energy, why? why? So if you can reserve that for someone special, most of the if you can reserve your essence, your being for someone special, when you're going to give and they give back, and as you upgrade, they upgrade as well, you know, then to me that talks to a society that I want to live in, you know. So how I look at it from a traditional point, when they'd say uh, the man and the woman were both virgins when they got married and then they lived together. You know, obviously it's different times. Not everyone's going to be virgins, not everyone's going to be childless, whatever the case may be. However, let's try and get it to close as possible, you know. Try and date as few people as possible because we understand that with every breakup, yes, there's lessons, but there's also trauma, you know. And you're gonna take your trauma, because most of us don't go for counseling, we don't go for uh, confessions at church, we don't speak to people. So we take this trauma from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship. And if you're getting fucked by hundreds of guys and they're treating you but nothing but just a booty, that's all they're seeing you as, that's gonna start playing into your psyche. If chicks are only seeing you as an ATM and a guy who's good at going down, after a while that's gonna play into who you think you are. And when you actually meet a, meet a quality woman, you won't know how to treat her. You won't. So you're going to start fucking around, bro. You know, you're going to revert to what you know. And that's giving out free bottles and doing all this fucked up shit because that's all you've been exposed to. So I look at those type of things and I ask myself, does that make our society better or worse? And if we're doing things as a people, men and women alike, as a people that are making us worse, what society are we leaving for our kids and our grandkids? Because then they'll be fucked for real. 100%. You know? Yeah. yeah, so that's how I see those type of things, dog. And people might disagree, but that's just me. Sex is nice. Yeah. Do you think it's spiritual? It can be. It can be. Like, there's people that are very good at bed, right? From a physical point. Yeah. But for me, it just... And there's people that will agree with me. If you can find a person who's good in bed, but a person that you also connect to, from an emotional point, I think that takes sex to a different level. You know, you know when people say they understand my body, they don't just understand your body, they understand you. They understand what you like, what you don't like. They understand the fact that who just always loves being in control. So in the bedroom, let me take away a little bit of control and play with that other side of him. A random one night stand might, might not understand that. You, you who understands that this girl has been taken advantage of and feels very insecure within her body once you date her and you actually love her and you know you know that she's vulnerable in the bedroom mm -hmm. so the way that you would be intimate with her would be very different than a guy who picks her up at a club hey pendugas fair what's that mm. it's different you there's i understand her i understand her needs from an emotional or spiritual point i understand her or your girlfriend knows what ah, this guy's a bit of a naughty bugger Maybe let me just touch his bum a little bit. Let me be, yeah, one. Because again, once there's a person who's good at sex, plus that emotional connection, plus that understanding who you are, plus I think it takes it to a different level. 
you know. So give me, when I look at sex, I don't just take it lightly. I think, Kuti, no, let's break it down. No, 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 no. It, there has to be a connection beyond this. Because if you look at the sisters that have had a lot a bigger body count, forget the American stats and the studies that they all do. Yeah. But they are more mentally not lacquer in comparison to sisters with a less body count. Because now all these guys have been busting loads in you, bro. How, how, that, that has to do something. You, you've had 35 different dicks bust full nuts in you. And every morning you wake up and you go to clicks or whatever to get a morning after. That has to do something to you psychologically. That has to, bro. If all you start seeing is women and you're just seeing them as cum dumps or ejaculation holes, regardless whether she's tall, short, fat, skinny, regardless of whether she's a good woman, bad woman, regardless if she's a slay queen or all you just weekend, 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 that has to play into your mind. How will you know when you meet the right one? How? You know, I think even beyond that, you, you, you start wanting to experiment more sexually to get a kick, to get that dopamine levels shot up again. Because you just know, what this week is this chick, this week is this chick, this week is this. That's why as guys, when we watch porn, we struggle to watch the same porn video over and over and over and over. There's a reason why every single faith ever whether you look at Islam, whether you look at Judaism, whether you look at Christianity, whether you look at the African cultures and the traditions, all of us truly just said, get this person and this person and then bond. They can't all be wrong. From people who are in fucking Antarctica to people who are in Fiji, they can't always be wrong. They didn't even speak to each other, but they all knew good, uh-uh. You look after your essence, you look after your essence when you guys come, you bind and you become one and you carry on. Ah, Tina, bro, uh-uh. Pinson wants to be Big Daddy Kane, flipping them over. Then you see yourself, and after a while, you're like, ish, is this how I want to live my life? Is this how I want communities to be? Is this how I want people to view my sister? How to view my kids? Nah, I don't want that. I don't want that. Wow, man, it's, it's a very interesting conversation, honestly. Mm. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I don't want to lie to you, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to shut him out. Uh, we stayed in the same street. Um, and when he was in college, yeah. there used to be this one lady that used to just um, give it out, you know. And like at the end, when they finished the, the year and they were leaving on, yeah. they like used to scream into her room, you know, like just, and she stuck her head out and like, Six guys were like, oh, I see a bong, I'm on pepe. So, you know, like, uh, like imagine, yeah. bro. Like, she, she's literally the, 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 the bicycle here, you know, and guys are just using it as a cum dump, you know. So, as much as those guys are disgusting and wrong, she's also disgusting and has very, very little value. And now she's going to come and say, You must go lobola her. When? But guys do that, though. Nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not guys. They don't care. No, not guys don't do that. Do guys do don't do that. These little tadpoles that do that. Guys don't do that. Much that don't do that. There's no guy that I know when I talk about a man mm. who's going to go and pay 30,000 rand for a second-hand Moby Sal. They did that with Faith and Getty. That's Then again, that's what I'm saying. It's tadpole stock. Don't let money fool you. Don't let a guy, because he might have muscles or a tattoo in his face, fool you. There's no man that is going to go pay 30,000 rand for a second-hand Moby Sal. It doesn't make sense. So unless something is not right from a cognitive point, or there's something people that are not telling us that we are not privy to, uh, privy to you are not going to go to a pep and buy a skip as a pep for 50,000. You will not. You will not go into a second-hand store and see a T-shirt that has holes and been torn, has been worn by 100 men, and then you're going to go buy it for full price. That doesn't make sense. You're going to go right now to mm. any uh, 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 lice, drive, driving license school and find Lama I-10 that they've been using and it's sitting with 550,000 kilometers <laughs> and it's been in been scratches and it's been into car accidents and it's gone and then you must pay full price so, like it was brand new so you know what they do they respray it yeah they reverse the mileage or they lie about the mileage they say no, no, they, uh, let's not talk about that the <laughs> <laughs> They spray the engine here and there, <laughs> so, uh, put it back on the market, and somebody is going to come out of 
maybe somewhere in Nigeria and then they're gonna buy it. So if if yeah. if if you don't know, you don't know. You do, if you don't know. So you know. so so if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. So I mean, I do this thing, and people have said it's very toxic. So I believe with you on first date, you put out all your red flags. Hundred percent. All your red flags. I say, listen, this is me. I've got this. I've got this problem. I've got these challenges. I've got this. I've got this. Uh, yeah. One. Is it worth us having a follow up conversation? Because I don't want to bullshit you. I want you to know. Much like when I go buy a, a car, this is the mileage, this is the year, this is the model, this is the this, this is the, this is the excellence, this is done, da, 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 da. Be upfront with that and then say, here's the cost. This person might not be your buyer, but the next person might, you know. So, okay, shop, if you've got four kids from four different guys, yeah, one, does it mean that there's no guy that's willing to be with you? That's not what it means. It just means that it's a smaller pool of men and a different type of men. So the moment you lead with that, you, you're cutting out all these bullshit uh, wannabe buyers, mm. you know. You're cutting out all these people that are saying, oh, no, I'm serious, Gandhi. He's just here to smash and crap. Mm. Yeah, one. So, Gim, it's very, very important. The reason why, excuse me, these relationships are becoming like a matter in the way it's just a two months, three months thing, and then you're on to the next one, on to the next one, is because after three months, I start seeing the real red flags that you're bullshitting me about, you know. So, again, yes, you might bullshit me and um, hide the speedometer mm. for this car, yaga, yaga, yaga driving school. You might spray this, you might clean this, but we, 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 we're not 22 anymore. You know, yeah. if you're experienced and you've been an experienced driver, you know, as you get into this car, after a, a month you go, ah, uh -uh. This, this, this is not a new car. Mm. And even when you sit inside, you're like, ah, uh ah. -uh. When you try and click that, you're like, ah, uh ah. -uh. This is not a new car. You bought it, it's yours. You know, it's yeah. mine, ne? but again, that's why the divorce rate is so high. Yeah. Because now you're looking at, oh, breakup rate is so high. Because after three months, I take it back to the shop and I say, fuck that. So, oh, faith and getting now they divorce now. You know, oh, mini, I mean, now they divorce now. Is it, uh, am I lying? Is this, this a secret knowledge? Is this unknown? So that's why you look at them. They get into these short term relationships. Amazing, amazing. Then what? Then what? Then the guy actually sees you for what you are, or the girl sees you for what you are, because not just guys, we bullshit and lie. Once they catch you out, then they say, no, sharp, I can't be with this. Right? Might as well just be open and honest and say, I'm an I-10, I've got Imadi Ja 500,000, uh, 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 uh. here's the right monetary value for this year. Don't try and be something you're not. And then as of you will see, actually, what you want to put down, meaning it's Yes, it might not be your first, second, or third, or fifth choice, but the one that you do get, your eighth choice, is going to be genuine love and care. Take that person. Do you think families should analyze a, their child? Do you think they should get to a point whereby if somebody comes and says, look, mm. I want to marry your kid, do you think they, they should... spoke about this, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you think they should just maybe say that, look, we don't want to lie to you. You can just come with your family and then we can just have an agreement. I've got an Without old, even you paying I've, anything. I've got an older brother and a younger sister. Okay. Every partner they've ever been with, if they are honest, every partner they've ever been, mm. I've always looked at the partner in the eyes and go, good luck. Because I know that my siblings are difficult people. My brother is so difficult. I know he is. I know my sister is so difficult. Me, I'm difficult. Mm. So I wouldn't go to, if someone wanted to lobola my sister, and go, she's a trillion, gazillion dollars. She's a, she's, she's a billion dollars to us as a family because we love her unconditionally. But I know that she's, she's got a strong mind. She's not going to do the traditional Makoti things. She's going to push back. She's going to be this. She's going to be that. She's going to be a 2024 lady. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not perfect. She's not, yeah, when she's rough around the edges, she's also going through her journey. I'm not going to come and make it seem as if I'm about to give off uh, Mary, Mother Mary. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to do that? You know, because again, at the same time, should it not work, I don't want you tomorrow coming back and blaming us and say, you guys said that your sister is, she's going to wash my feet. You guys said that your sister is going to make us breakfast, lunch, and supper. I told you from get-go that she ain't doing that. And in my mind, if you lobola a fair price for lobola is 100000 just for a 21-year-old virgin, 21-year-old virgin with a degree, let's just say, is 100,000. Then I start looking at other people. I'm like, okay, she's 21. No, she's 35. Down to 60,000 or whatever the case is. She's got two kids. 
down to 30,000. Mm. She's, you know, yes, she's still smart. She's still amazing. She's still going to, but she can't be like any, like myself. I've got three beautiful kids. So I understand, Wuti, whatever lady comes into my life, she'll need to have, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, the burden of just being an overnight stepmom. You know, that's not easy, bro. So I need to be forthcoming to those sisters and say, guys, no, Lalilan, you know, I'm not that 100,000 rand worth guy anymore. I'm that I-10 that's also got the mileage. You know, I will tell a sister, with hey, sissy, when we go out for drinks, there might be three or, girl, three or four girls that might give you the side eye because maybe I've been there, whatever, and they might be mad. There might be girls that will start stalking you on social media and might send you receipts in the DMs because they might be angry at whatever that I did or I hurt them in a certain way, you know. So again, that's not positives of being with me. Those are negatives that I need to be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. And those are things that I don't see people, the average sister with a level head, seeing that as things that add value to me, you know. So again, I really think family plays a crucial role in stop bullshitting and being honest. But a lot of the problem is that we also bullshit to our families, you know. So if guys are doing line of coke in the bathroom, they're not going to go to their parents and say that. If our sisters have, have had 50 dicks in them, they're not going to tell their parents that they've had 50 dicks, you know. So they're going to give this illusion because they only go back home once a year for Christmas. They're going to give this illusion of being the perfect girl. You know, just give this illusion of being well kept, well groomed, well what, and then they 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 sell that bullshit story to their families. When uh, you come in and you lobola, knowing full well that nine of your boys have been with her, knowing full well that she's had seven abortions, knowing full well that she's got credit card debt, this debt, that loan, that loan, that that you will now have to assist in, and then the family goes and says, "I found deal, hello, I found deal, hundred thousand. Yeah, fuck out of here, dumbass family. I have no time for that." I need an honest family because at the end of the day, I am wanting to add value in their lives. They are trying to add values in my life and the families are trying to get together. And the moment you start bullshitting each other from the get, we're building our house on sand. You know, it has to be on rocks, it has to have a strong foundation. You know, so it, game, it's very, very important that the families understand fully their kids. Let's talk about guns. Um, I just guns. Just, yeah, guns. Jesus. Yeah, guns. <laughs> Like, oh, it's yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I recently went to Mozambique to visit my family. I'm half Mozambican, by mm. the way, if you don't know, or if you didn't know. That the good half. Uh, I speak Portuguese, bro. I follow my to bear, bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this Portuguese. Is this guy is crazy. <laughs> so um, I think it was 2013. Um, yeah. So my uncle is in the taxi industry. He bought himself sure. a new taxi in Mozambique. Yeah. Uh, in Durban. Um, they bought it to Mozambique. Shit. Um, you know, it was still a brand new taxi. Very clean. Brand new. You know? Yeah. Uh, so he took a couple of people in the neighborhood, you know, traveling from a place called Shibutu next to mm. Shai Shai. Yeah. Uh, to Maputo. It's like a long distance. It's mm. like from here to Polokwane or something like that. Sure. Right. So what happened is that a month after he bought the taxi, mm. uh, one of the guys that uh, he was, you know, transporting to Mozambique on a daily basis mm. came back and took the taxi while he was sleeping. So he looked for the taxi. Uh, he found it far, far away, maybe, for example, in Cape Town mm. while he mm. stays in Joburg, you know. So the taxi traveled all the way to Cape Town, you know. Mm. So when you got there, there were police uh and then there were other guys as well, taxi industry uh, guys. You know how this mm -hmm. industry can be. And he got shot multiple times, right? Your uncle? Yeah, my uncle. So he has, I think he has maybe more than three taxis that side. Mm. So he decided to make a, a gun license uh, in Mozambique, mm. uh, came to South Africa uh, to buy a gun, mm. you know, uh, so that he can protect himself, mm. you know. I couldn't understand why, uh, mm. because was, um, sorry about your uncle. I think um, yeah, that's, that's he's still alive, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. Yo, it's I think uh, the taxi industry is is a, is a different world. Yeah, you know, the taxi industry is a different world, and um, uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a different conversation, a whole different interview, you know, because we could speak about that industry for two yeah. hours. Yeah. Uh, I've got family who's in the taxi industry that have passed away as well, so yeah, it's it's not a yeah, anyway, so let's go back to the gun. So do I think it's important for men to have guns? I, I, I wish and I prayed 
we actually didn't live in the society that we lived in. I wish and I prayed that there were uh, uh, no criminals, there were no evil and disgusting humans. You know, I've had this one conversation, I was talking to a friend of mine and they said, uh, Pinson, if you could click your fingers and all guns disappeared, would you do that? And I was like, I wouldn't do that. Because you didn't say click my fingers and evil criminals disappear. You said guns disappear. Because evil criminals, six of them can still come with knives. They could still come with baseball bats. You know, they could, six guys could come with their fists. You know, so evil is evil is evil and it will show itself in different ways. What a gun assists in doing is to try and equal the playing fields. You know, it is where a sister that is weighing 55 kgs and there's four guys trying to rape her. All of a sudden, she is carrying 12 bullets in her weapon. So now everybody gets three, you know. So type of situation. So now this sister who's 55-year-old got the chance to protect herself, you know. Um, it is for that granny, you know, who is looking after four of her grandkids. And there's guys that break through the window to, you know, unfortunately take one of the kids or, you know, harm them, whatever the case is. The gun is then that equalizer for that 70-year-old granny to ensure that she can protect her four grandkids, you know. So in that case, I'm talking about criminals who aren't even carrying guns themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. But now that allows for the good people or the victims in this story to kind of balance the, 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 the playing field. And that's how I see having a gun. Mm -hmm. um, give me, I'm, I'm an avid... Um, gun guy, fundi, whatever you want to call him. I, I, I try and promote legal guns as much as possible. Um, actually, I haven't been training for a while, to be fully honest with you. Um, but there was a time in my life where I was just immersed in training, training, training. Um, and I still believe in training. You know, you go there to the range, like anything, you know, if you... If you're a, an artist, you know, you need to practice as much as possible. Not necessarily so that you can go out there and cause harm, you know, but in order to manage yourself as well, to manage uh, the people around you. Uh, I, I hate it when you go into a space and you see Abantu feel taller than what they are because they are carrying a weapon or whatever the case may be, you know. Um, I've had many encounters, many encounters where you see people for what they are, jerks, losers, and in the moment they see or know that you're carrying a gun, then they are respectful, which is opposite of what life should be. It should be a matter of respecting every single person. Guys, we live in Joburg, we live in South Africa, where, the, where we are at, it's, it's a criminal state. It's a mafia state. You know, we live in a space where our sisters are scared to even walk to the closest engine garage to buy a loaf of bread at any time of the day. You know, we live in a, st a space where GBV levels are disgustingly high. Rape is disgustingly high. And again, I'm not saying that everybody should have a gun. I'm saying that people should educate themselves, train themselves, and then go through the legal process to get themselves a weapon. If we stayed in a society where we had efficient cops, we had efficient systems, the law was run the way it should be, then I'd be saying to people, no, don't, don't get a gun, just learn how to defend yourself physically, whatever the case may be. But unfortunately, we live in South Africa. Unfortunately, we're not, we're not just, there's people who wish harm on you without even knowing who you are. There's people that will see you with your phone and will stab you just for your phone, you know. There's people who will uh, go into a, a, a house, break in to rape a two-year-old. There's, there's people like that in the country. We hear these news all the time until we get numb to it, you know. So for me, I'm just saying, guys, Educate yourself, train, and then find the legal way to carry a weapon. Because unfortunately, 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 we live in a criminal state and our police don't do a good job. You know, by the time you call them, if they do arrive, if some people break into your house now, you know, and the closest police station is, let's say, 15 minutes away, how long will it take them to get to your home? After you call them and you say, people have just broken into my house. An hour? Two hours? Just to get to your home. By that time, your mother, your daughter, your wife has been raped. By that time, you've been stabbed. By that time, they've broken and taken everything in your home. And they've left. And they, they, we haven't found AKA's killer on camera. We haven't found Senzo's killer in a room full of people. Who, who are you? 
So I know, Uguti, with myself and with my family, I'm doing the best that I can to protect them. How? I move into a neighborhood where the crime rates are the lowest. I move into a space where it's a complex with uh, electric fence and security guard. I make sure, Uguti, I have a big ugly dog. And then I make sure, Uguti, I've got a couple of friends in my home mm -hmm. that can shoot through the door, you know. So when you come through, all nine of you, I, I have seconds for everyone, you know. So again, I believe in looking after a family. If we lived in a country that was Finland, we wouldn't even need walls, you know. We, if you live in Korea where they leave the key in the car, you know, type of situation, then I wouldn't be pro weapons the way that I am, you know. It would be a different discussion. Jeez, man. Do you own a gun? Who, me? Yeah. I carry a gun with me, the same way that you carry your fists. So that when some people try you, you can give them a left and a same right. Same way as I carry my phone. Same way that you carry your phone. Do you feel safe? Me. In South Africa? I don't feel safe in South Africa. Because if I felt safe in South Africa, I wouldn't carry a gun. So we train, we fight all the time, you know, so we train. You train with your wife? Yeah, so we train. We train, my, so, even with my kids, we train. So you we, know how to we train. So you know how to use a gun. Your wife yeah. knows how to use a gun. No, but and this here oh, and that as well. So again, you might not have your weapon at that time. It might be in the safe or whatever the case may be. You always want to be able to try and protect yourself and get out of harm's way as quickly as possible. You know. So again, with my kids, unfortunately in today's schools, not saying that my kids' school is like this, mm -hmm. but in many schools there's a lot of bullying. We see it all the time. All the kids, younger kids, the, the, we're hearing all the times about teachers that are doing inappropriate things with school kids. You know, So I'm teaching my kids to be able to defend themselves. Because someone's like, why don't they just tell the principal? Well, if they're getting fingered in the toilet by a teacher, when are they going to go tell the principal? You know, after they get fingered? So I'm going to make sure with my kids, again, if they're ever in a space where that is happening with, with an, uh, an uncle, with a cousin, with a watwati, with a stranger, they can defend themselves physically. And then once they get to an age, you know, because I go with them to the gun range, put these things, they see me shooting. Once they get to an age, then train them, you know, how to use a weapon. I do hijack training. I use uh, home defense training. I'm not saying with them I'm going to be perfect because even the best goalkeepers let goals go through. I'm just saying with you, I'll be way better than a person who's not trained. I'll be way better than those uh, TV gangsters that are shooting on the side like that. No, 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 no. You know, I'm more trained than them. The same thing with fighting. I'm not saying with you, I can go and beat up any stranger. Da, da, da. I'm just saying compared to the person who's not trained, I can tell her to get into the ring with you and she'll clean your pipes. You know, again, it's just as a preventative, not for you to go out there and be the bully, but just when the bully is trying to come into your space, you are able to defend yourself and your loved ones, especially for our sisters, especially in this country where our sisters are victimized every single day. Imagine, imagine if a jerk, a fucking dick of a guy mm. is like, I'm about to rape her and then finds out that she is a black belt jiu-jitsu, she does Muay Thai and she carries a clock 19. That guy is going to come out second best. He's going to learn that day whether he's talking to his maker after she's done with him or he's found himself broken in 10 different places mm -hmm. to make sure what you don't just go to people and think you can take advantage of them, especially our sisters. So I say to our sisters, learn how to fight, self-defense, controlled. Learn about weapons. Study them, practice, and get yourself a firearm. You know, until such time where the law, the system can clean up their fucking act and protect us as much as we pay the tax to order to get protected, until such time where we can do that, until such time the demons leave so many people, you need to be able to protect yourself, and unapologetically so. If three gunmen approach you, mm. you have a gun, mm. they have similar guns as mm -hmm. you are, mm -hmm. what do you do? What are they approaching me for? Like to mug me? Something like that. No, man, I've got insurance for that. I'm not to Robocop. I'm not to Robocop. If there's a home invasion and there's guys with guns, the training is not necessarily just to be good at shooting. The, the training is to train your ego. You know, the, it's the training your ego. The reason why we fight all the time in the ring and, and we lose and we win and we, is to train the ego. You know, so when someone comes to take my phone, insurance will replace my phone, but insurance won't replace my life. You know, insurance can replace my car. You know, so again, if I'm in the car and I'm actually the points guns at me, I will, now I might also shit myself, put mm. my hands up like this, 
get into the car, shop, buy. Let them go, call insurance, hey, insurance, they took you my car. You wouldn't shoot them back. For what? First and foremost, the law, the, 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 I'm in, so the law of the land says, I'm, I'm allowed to defend human life, okay. including my life, mm -hmm. right? So if my life is at risk and I can prove that my life is at risk, then I have all rights to defend it. But if you come and you slap me, bah, or let's say you come and you just give me a right to a poof and you drop me to the ground, mm -hmm. and then you leave, you leave, is my life still at risk? No. It's not. So I can't pull in my weapon. So if you take my car and you drive off, my life is not at risk. If someone comes into my home, takes my TV, and then starts running out, my life is not at risk. So I have no, uh, I've got no leg to stand on if I shoot this person. I'm in trouble. You know, the law is very clear. You need to prove that life was at risk. So if you take out a knife and start moving in my direction, my life is at risk. If you take out a knife and start moving towards TK's direction, his life is at risk. So he has right to life. So I can neutralize you because I'm protecting life. But if you go and you snatch his phone and run away, I can't pull out my weapon. I can just say, it's hard. So are you saying that if you are in a supermarket and guys come in with guns, bah, 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 they're shooting what? Up in the sky? Yeah. Them. One, again, I'm not a hero. Ne? Is, I'm not a hero. And you're literally there in the store. I'm so shitting myself as much as everybody's shitting themselves. I'm not a hero. And you're... I'm not a, 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 a police yeah. officer. For real. One, I'm not a hero. I'm not a police officer. I'm not there in anyone's service to... No one's paying me for something. So the first thing is that these guys are here to mug the store. Everything in the store is insured. Sit down as what they're saying. Let them take the stuff and go. If one of those guys go and grab a two-year-old... That is a different situation now. As any man, there's a morality in what you need to do your next steps now. If you are walking with, whether you have a gun or no gun, and you're seeing five guys kicking the shit out of Ukoko, you can see Ukoko, and there's five guys kicking the shit, there's a morality as a man that you now need to stand on. Do you watch Ukoko get beat up? Or do you go and try and do something? Those to me are two different things. But if there's five guys and the one guy goes and snatches Goku's purse and runs away, are you going to be a hero? I don't know. I don't think so. So we must always be aware with, when having a weapon, when having that, the main thing is to protect human life. If people are taking tangible things that can be replaced, let them go. If, pe if some guy comes through and wants to make a shoulder charge and wants to, don't let your ego take the best of you. Don't let the ego, there's so many guys. We were at... Um, a bar now, and you going, I'm going in, and this one bounces like, hey, you can't come in. And he's, um, bamba raf, mos. I was like, geez. And he pats me down aggressively, and then he, he feels the weapon. I'm like, ne? And he goes, oh, sorry, sorry, brother, sorry. Um, no weapons. I'm like, dog, why didn't you just come to me with that respect initially? Why must there be a weapon in the place and a what what for you to talk to a human being the way all human beings should address each other, you know? Now your ego is taking a knock, and I'm just putting both my hands up just to show you, Guti, I'm no threat. I'm here for a drink and here to leave. That is what a weapon should be. A weapon should not be anything to do with your ego. It should be any, it's, it's not a, a dick-sized competition, and if, if you are that person, you shouldn't have one. If psychologically you are not ready, because at the same time you can use this to kill yourself, to kill your loved ones, to kill uh, innocent, if you are not ready, like anything, please don't have these things. I know so many guys that go to gym, have a bit of a bicep, and then say, before you go to No, dog, no. And when you're gym, you look You need to work on your mind, bro. You're not ready. I thought you're go to gym, are you trying to do it for health reasons? I thought you're go to gym, are you trying to make sure that you, 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 you are able to better protect yourself and your loved ones? I thought those are the things that you were training for. Maybe to get a young, beautiful girl every now and again, sure. But you're jibbing with your gym, no, nah, dog, you need to work on your brain, dog. So, uh, if you're not ready for a gun, guys, please don't get one. If you're not training right now, please don't get one. We, 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 we don't need more crazies with weapons. We've got enough that are out there. We've got enough amapoyes, abas misaya, abas lupa, abas tretnisha, that are meant to protect us, but are doing the opposite. We've got enough of those crazies. You do a lot of boxing. Um, yeah. Is it the same thing with boxing, whereby uh, some, when you're doing boxing, uh, it's not like you're going to go everywhere and beat up people. Dog, I haven't beat up nobody, you know. Because, again, you, 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 we, we all, and I think this is just to get into a, a more sensitive, softer 
parts of this conversation. Yeah. We all are dealing with so many insecurities. Né? So I started training at a young age. So my mother was in a very abusive relationship with my father, you know, and my father used to beat up my mom physically, you know, so he used to beat up not just physically, but emotionally, psychologically, the whole shebang. Mm. And I remember me at age like 10, as a child, 11, and I used to say, Utinam, one day I'll be in Zuchima, you know, so that if he ever did that, I could prevent that, you know. I know there's many boys, many, many boys that go through the same journey. So once I started training, it was literally that that was the demon in my mind. You know, Guti, no, I want to make sure, Guti, no one takes advantage of the people that I love. That it, it had, I never, ever trained to, like, to get to a point where I could be like, yeah, so that when I, uh, uh, girls can see me topless. That only came in my mid-twenties. Only then when I started wearing a vest and going to the beach and then, um, but the, the, the fundamental of me getting into training was me to work on those insecurities, you know, feeling like super powerless when your mother's crying and you're like, nah, this shit can't keep happening, you know? And this is you at age 10. We say, come now we are Kalush. I push up trying to be a, a stronger version of yourself, you know? And then as you get older, things change, obviously, you know, um, he then stopped when I got to a certain age. But anyway, and then I just fell in love with the training. You know, I fell in love with the training. I saw that um, I was doing a lot of weights. My body was getting bulky. And with boxing, the difference between training at Chimin with weights and boxing, boxing is a very, very humbling sport. Um, boxing doesn't care how you look like. You can have a scar on your face. You can have muscles on muscles. You, 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 you can have tattoos. You, you can, I wonder when you step into the ring, mm. you, you can't see who's who. You know, chubby little white boy, get into the ring with him, you'll see something. You'll see something. Oh, trap a hot, 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 hot. And then after that, he's going to buy you a cappuccino and smile with you, you know. And it will teach you humility. It will teach you respect. It will teach you what you treat every single person you meet, you know, whether it's a street sweeper, it's a CEO, you treat them exactly the same, you know. And that's why I love boxing, and that's why I fell in love with boxing. That thing of keep your hands in your pockets. Don't try to be a hero. Because I'm going to be like, I'm shy, 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 you are you in a bar, someone accidentally stepped on you. They say sorry, say sorry, just keep it moving. Hey, fuck you, hey, what you gonna do? Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna, hey, hey, hey. Good, good. I've been in many situations where I've yeah. seen so many people getting humbled because yeah. of the papa. Papi don't I ask. papi. If someone does something to you accidentally or you do something accidentally, hardy boy, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Keep it moving. Don't try to be a hero at times, especially when it comes to do with ego. No. Pinson, you know, um, there's something that has been bugging me a lot, man, mm. about South African men, mm. you know. It seems as if like they're not okay mentally, mm. you know, mm. with everything that has been happening. Mm. The GBV, you know, mm. men killing each other and stuff mm. like that. Men killing themselves. Men killing themselves, yeah. true, 100%. What do you think is happening to it? I, I don't think people are ready for that conversation. I've spoken about that, um, and I just see it. It feels like when you have those conversations, I want to say, "When a person will play my lab, I will play my lab," and I'm saying, "No, I'm trying to understand, discuss, and come up with a solution as a community." Four out of every five suicides are men. That's that's a truth, you know. I'm sorry, YouTube, if they yeah. don't like that, you know, or four out of five every time takes their life. It's men. You know, it's, it's men that on the outside seem very happy. You know, RIP Rick Eric, you know, RIP uh, DJ Twitch was uh, Ellen DeGeneres' DJ, you know. Uh, yeah. I've, I've had very close friends of mine, family men that have taken their lives, you know. Um, 
people aren't ready to have the conversation around male mental health. We're not. It's the same when you have a, a conversation where, let's say, there's a sister who was sexually harassed, ne? and then we say something like, well, what was she wearing? Oh, I don't have that conversation. No, but we, we should have that conversation because I know that if a chicken goes past hyenas, a hyena will try and bite. So if a sister is dressed very sexually revealing and is in a very unbecoming space, there's a higher chance of her getting sexually harassed than if she's just dressed more modestly or at home, you know. I'm not saying people don't get victimized in every space. That does happen. I'm saying we'll see there's higher chances and high probabilities in different spaces based on how you carry yourself, you know. So if you go to a club or a bar or whatever and people are drunk and you dressed and people can see your coochie and your titties, chances are higher there of you getting sexually harassed than if you were at church, as an example. You know, not saying that people don't get arrested at church, I'm just making two comparisons. But I don't think people are ready for have those conversations. They don't. People like being a victim, or people like blaming men, or people like blaming women, whatever the case may be. Men are dying. Men are killing women. Men are raping women. Men are beating up women. We have to find out why. No, that's not what the conversation. You know, people are, oh, it's, it's because uh, there's deadbeat men who never raise their kids or who, why? Don't, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy in thinking. If you're going to say, Uti Uchas, this is a deadbeat dad. I've never ever met a man when I'm having a conversation around their, their legacy and their name and their careers and their dreams and aspirations. I've never met a single man who's never, who's said, yeah, I'm so and I'm just going to leave the child. Every man has an aspiration for his surname and his legacy to live on through seed. When he becomes that deadbeat or runs away or is no longer, the question is why? The question is why is it that our generation was raised by single mothers? Are we ready for that conversation? Is it that just all our fathers were deadbeat? Is it just because all our fathers were messed up? Is it just because that all our mothers just chose to not want to be around a man? Maybe did they push them away? What are the options? Why is it that in today's time, men are in the space that they're at? Why is it that in today's time, you've got, uh, what, what, what's the stat? 30% of millennials, ma males, are not having sex, and they're finding themselves hiding in their little rooms, uh, either on social media or playing PlayStation every day. Why is it that so many men are running away from job opportunities Why, or, or, or not having job opportunities? Why is it that when I go back to Newcastle, I see more unemployed young men than I see black females? Are we not having these conversations? Are we ready for them? Men in today's time are fucked. Whether it is an Andrew Tate talking about the matrix, whether it's people talking about the red pull this, whether it's uh, conspiracy theories, whatever the case is, but something is not lacquer within the mindset of the man. And we're not having these conversations. All we're saying is that a man needs to be strong and a man needs to provide. I hear sisters talking about equality and feminism all the time, right? They all equal, they all feminist until the bull arrives. Where's the fucking equality there? Everybody is a fucking feminist and all about equality until you walk into a room, sister, and all the men are sitting down. And now men need to stand up and give you a chair or until we have a buffet, or there's a line, or there's criminals at the door, until something where you now need a strong man, it was equality. It was equality when it came to equal pay at work, right? But when you guys are going for a movie, who must pay? And when you have the majority of unemployment being unemployed black men, and no one's having these questions, is it just because having a penis makes you lazy? Is it just because black men don't want to work? Is it just because, what's the reason? What's the reason? We grew up in a space where we were bombarded with media that was highly feminizing us. We used to grow up with my mom watching It Days Nippled. For a young black boy, what is that doing? What, what, what's, 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 what's it teaching the young black boy? If you're growing up and you're watching something like My Wife and Kids, where you hear the lady Jay busy shouting at Mike all the time, the lady is the one who doesn't work. She's a stay-at-home mom. He's the multi-millionaire rich guy, but she's the one that always shouts at him and he's just there to be the comedic relief. You can look at it at Blackish. She's the one who has control running the household. He's just the Popeye 
Look at even the Popeyes that we watch, the Simpsons. 100%. You know, you have Marge Simpson who's unemployed, but she runs the household, and you've got Homer, the dumb one, who's bringing the money. You could look at Family Guy. You could look at American Dad. Whatever cartoons that you guys choose to watch, you always realize that there's always these strong queens mm. with these dumb guys. I've got little kids. When they switch on TV and they watch something like Doc McStuffins, a beautiful young black princess who's a doctor, where's the young little black kings? What are they watching? Where's those shows for them? Where they can look at themselves and beat their chest. We've got a Little Mermaid where all these beautiful, pretty little girls are watching the Little Mermaid and going, oh, there's a black Ariel. Where's that for little black boys? Just this Wakanda thing. Mm. Where the next one we were getting our asses beat. And now they have to look at that and going, okay, the black man lost. He started off winning, but he's lost again. All we are hearing is that black men cheat, black men are trash, black men are corrupt. That's all you're hearing. There's, there's no strong heterosexual role models for these young boys to look up to. Who are they going to look up to? Future. Who are they going to look up to? Who? who? The, pol the politicians that are being told, that we told about that are all corrupt. If you're a young black boy, and I say name five current in different age bracket black motivational guys in your public space, who are you going to name that look like you? Who are you going to name that represent what you'd like to become? Where are they? There's none. The only black men that the black men that end up making it are these soft feminized men. That's what's happening, dog. People aren't ready for the conversation. They just go, oh, another black guy with the mic. He must be mad. He must be angry. You know, I wish I could watch my own, but there isn't any. I can give you so many good role models that are gay black men from a David Tlali to a Somizi, they're doing amazing things within their industry. And if you're a young black gay boy, great, look up to them. For us, it's in a speguba. So then our little black boys will grow up and say, oh, one day I'll become, hold the World Cup and get myself a white girl. That's what we want. Is, is that what we're trying to push? It's very, very difficult in today's time because we have all these societal problems, but we don't want to address them. We don't want to have these conversations. We don't want to sit in a room and say, guys, here, here's what we will all agree on. We are all to blame somehow. All of us have fucked up, from our great-grandparents to our grandparents to our parents to us. We've all messed up. Okay, what are the problems? Let's write them down. What are the potential solutions? How can we go about assisting each other to fix this? Because if we don't fix the mental health of men, more of our sisters will get raped, more our sisters will get beaten up, more our sisters will get killed, and then these guys will also take their lives. And the young black girls that are watching Doc McStuffins and also want to be a beautiful doctor or an accountant or be these career women, you guys are going to struggle finding strong black men. You're going to struggle finding quality men to marry, to be the fathers of your kids, and to assist in building households and legacies for your family. You're not going to find any of them. You might have to run to other races, who also don't want you. We're not seeing all these white boys dating our sisters, that I can assure you. We're not seeing all these Arabic or Chinese guys that are dating our sisters, that I can assure you. So again, it's a conversation to have with what is happening within the black society from a mental point. Because I seek what right. Nati si het. Nati bosi sbetu. Nati, please can you guys assist us? Because we also need to heal the same way that you guys also need to heal. Benson, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it.